Hey guys, it's Christina of Crafty Paws. Welcome to the Diamond Dyes Spring YouTube Hop. Each of the design team members for Diamond Dyes is going to be posting a video sharing a project that they've made with Diamond Dyes, and they will also each be giving away a $10 gift certificate to Diamond Dyes, so you have lots of chances to win. The only requirement is to leave a comment and to be subscribed to Diamond Dyes YouTube channel. I used the Steampunk Gears die set and the Steampunk Gears mini album die set to create this canvas. And I'm going to be sharing the whole process with you from start to finish. I did want to mention that Diamond Dies is also having a guest design team call. And the way you can try out is to email Diamond Dies. I'll put a link in the description box below. In the subject line, put guest design team. And D, the owner of Diamond Dies, will be asking you for uh, links to projects where you've used one or more Diamond Dies. And of course, you'll need to have a link to your YouTube channel. I hope you enjoy this process video. If by chance you're making a purchase at Diamond Dies, please consider using the code THANKSCHRISTINA with a K for 15% off your entire order and free worldwide shipping on all orders of $35 or more. So in honor of Earth Day, which is April 22nd today, I am recycling some cereal boxes. And I use that often for lightweight chipboard. And if I need medium weight, I double it up. I'm just taking some black gesso. And you can use black acrylic paint, too, if that's what you have on hand. I like gesso because it gives you a little bit more tooth when it's fully dry but I'm just going to paint both sides of all of the gears. You can see I've glued some of the pieces together and now I'm taking DecoArt Metallic Luster and a bit of an old rag and I'm just going to burnish this onto the gears. And this Metallic Luster is actually a wax metallic finish and it's water and soap cleanable and it really gives a great shimmer. It makes these chipboard pieces with this black undercoat a real metallic look. I've done a few different metallic or faux metallic treatments on chipboard, but this is by far the easiest. It makes these diamond dies gears really look like metal pieces. Now I'm taking a separate little rag and a different DecoArt metallic luster. This one is Silver Spark, just to give some highlights. I'm not coating the whole thing, as you can see. I'm actually just going to um, touch up the highlights. That first gear is probably not done the best, but don't worry. I've got plenty of gears that I have die cut out to give this treatment to, and it gets easier and faster as you go. So I decide to do a whole bunch of them, first with the black shimmer and then with a light coating, just a dusting almost, of the silver spark. And it really gives a great faux metallic look. Now this one I wanted to be extra careful with because it's two of the Diamond Dyes gears put together. It's the Diamond Dyes Steampunk mini album gears die set. And I just think it looks so substantial and rich. And I haven't seen any other dye company that has a gear that looks this amazing. Now, I actually die cut the medium size, the one that has more intricacy, two of those, put those together, and then layer that on top of the bigger piece there. And it gave an amazing look. Now, I did the same thing to this gear as I did to the smaller ones. I did the layer of black gesso covered with black shimmer and then the silver spark and the finished result looks just amazing. Here you can see the before and after and here are two done. These are greeting farm images from the Hatter collection. I colored them up with Copic markers, scanned them into my computer and then took it to a printer where I could get it printed out on a laser printer. The key here is if you have a sentiment, you have to reverse the image so that when you do the transfer, it comes out correctly. I'm using Americana Decor Image Transfer Medium to transfer this photocopied image and the sentiment onto this pre-primed canvas. Now, the instructions are that you're supposed to put this transfer medium on the canvas and also on the 
image side of the laser photocopy. I think the trick here is to just make sure that you get a good coating of this transfer medium on each of the pieces that you want to put on your canvas or wood piece or wherever you're going to put it. You just don't want the canvas or these images to dry before you get the two pieces adhered together. And because this is a little delicate and because I'm trying to make it all straight, um, I'm trying to be really fast here. And of course, I've sped this up to four times normal speed for video purposes. And now I'm just making sure that I get the images really well adhered onto the canvas. The key is to get good contact and make sure that the two sides are wet. Um, and of course, not tear your papers. <laughs> and it, you have to eliminate bubbles and try to get out the excess transfer medium. Now, while I let that dry for about six to eight hours, I'm going to put some texture around the edges of this canvas. And I'm using a deco art stencil called Pixelated, along with some deco art dimensional effects texture paste. Now, a little tip here for stenciling with texture paste. I find that I get the best results if I put a thin coat of the texture paste on with a palette knife. Not only does that save on texture paste, but it also helps prevent the paste from seeping in under the stencil. Now I just do this all around the entire border kind of of the canvas just to create texture and to give my inks and sprays that you'll see in a minute uh, have some place to hang on to or grip on to. Now to remove the backing on these images, you have to first wait a full six to eight hours. I sped it up this drying time by putting my heat tool against it a few times throughout the period. And so I think I waited about six hours. And then you have to put just plain water on the back, wait between two to five minutes, and then you can start peeling away the backing. And I've sped this up obviously, but it's really important to take your time when you do this so you don't over kind of remove the paper backing. There's like a coating that gets formed with that transfer medium. So you have to kind of peel it away as you see me doing there. And then you keep applying water with your finger or you can use a rough sponge to do this too. I actually prefer to use my finger because I can really feel the coated paper and then the thin layers of paper being removed with my finger, just rotating it around and making sure to keep my finger wet. I don't want to be too rough on this because you can peel away the image itself from the canvas as well. This part is a little time consuming, but I figured better safe than sorry. Now, like you would with watercolor, I'm wetting down the area of the canvas with shimmer spray, just with a paintbrush. And then I'm just dabbing little droplets of blue spray ink. The shimmer spray that I'm putting down first kind of to wet down the canvas to help the ink spread out is a Tattered Angels Glimmer Mist in blue icing. So there's a faint blue tint. And then afterwards, I'm dotting the um, dark blue with Deco Art Media Shimmer Mist in turquoise. And I really like the effect of this, just letting the ink and the shimmer mist do the work watching that spread out like that it's very organic looking and very natural looking which is what i wanted kind of to frame around these little girls and to me it almost looks like i don't know fireflies or blossoms or sparkles <laughs> all around framing up these little girls Now to create a softer transition from the white area, center areas of the canvas to the edges, I'm using more of that shimmer mist and a paintbrush and just blending it out a little bit. I didn't want to detract at all from those little splotchy areas, but I did want the edges to be more blended out. And now for the really fun part and the wow part of this altered canvas. 
I'm hot gluing on all those gears that I had pre-prepared and I'm putting some of them on the front of the canvas and then some I'm attaching to the back to actually accentuate the depth of the canvas and to also give kind of more of a 3D effect of all of these gears. And I start with the biggest gear, that double gear on the upper right corner and then I'm putting some of the medium and smaller gears along the edges just so that there is a bit of a transition and it looks like more of like a framing. I'm also, as you can see, putting another of those big gears on the back on the lower left corner. And I want to do that because I also die cut out one of those Tim Holtz alterations dies that has the clock and the little clock hands. And I'm actually poking through the canvas with a brad going through the arms of the clock. Sorry, it's a little blurry here, but I'm just putting hot glue on the back of that um, canvas and now I'm positioning that clock die cut and it's great because the little arms of the clock are actually movable because they're attached with that brad. I'm just securing the clock die so that everything is very secure and now I'm going to be decorating around that corner with more of the small and medium size gear dies. You'll see that I'm attaching more along the back as well. I want to make sure that the whole altered canvas has a good balance. And I will say I use some gears that are not diamond dies gears. They're the Tim Holtz alterations one, but I found that those look kind of chunky, whereas the diamond dies ones look more refined. So I'm using the diamond dies gears on the front of the canvas and using the Tim Holtz dies for those gears on the back side of the canvas more. There's no particular formula or system for where I put all of these die cut gears. I'm just looking for a little bit of balance. I have some big dies on the upper right, so I wanted to have some big dies on the lower left. I also had the dies kind of the larger gears toward closer to the largest die cut gears. And then I'm creating a little more balance by making sure I'm reinforcing the back with some more visual weight with more gears on the back close to those big pieces, those big gears in the corners. And as I go toward the other corners of the canvas, I'm getting smaller and smaller, generally speaking. extra whimsy I'm attaching a metal butterfly here that I put some gears on and put a key down the middle of the butterfly because I think a steampunk butterfly is always cute to add with steampunk girls and here I'm adding a Tim Holtz alteration faucet knob which I think is so fun because you can actually turn the knob even after you glued that knob into place lastly I added this chain I attached it with staples to the canvas and I put on a whole bunch of gears and keys. I love the movement that that adds. I hope you enjoyed this process video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to keep hopping along this spring hop for diamond dies. Thanks for watching.